Another day, another NPM package going rogue. Now, in this video, I want to discuss a few things around this NPM package, faker.js and color.js, which have been extensively discussed by Fireship and other people in the community. Fireship has an amazing video on the same topic. So I won't go into details of what happened because obviously, you know, somebody, someone pushed a corrupted version, something bad happened because the package is auto update in NPM and uh, everything went on fire. In this video, I want to give you a brief context of how to avoid what happened as a developer. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So a quick one minute summary of what happened is there was an NPM package, a developer, who was the maintainer of the package pushed a corrupted version that is a fancy way of saying that he pushed a version in which the code obviously did not work like it was supposed to packages in other ecosystems like other libraries got automatically updated somehow and uh, it basically stopped their working as a package right so just was affected other packages like http server was affected and so on now these two packages faker.js and color.js had their own backstory why they were corrupted and what was the agenda behind that that's a different story but in this video let's just understand why these problems happen if it happened to you in the first place i'm going to go ahead inside a very simple playground and i'm just going to try to install a package like first of all just let me initialize it with an npm project and i'm going to install a very simple package like express right we all know express js and express is a nice package hopefully it does not go rogue anytime soon but you're gonna see when i go to package.json you're gonna see we have a dependency of express now assume let's assume that the maintainer of express goes mad and he or she they just release a packaged version 4.17.3 in which Express is a bad player, right? Now, what happens with NPM is that this caret symbol which you see over here says that it is going to update anything, this package, it's, it's going to update this package every time you run an NPM install command if there is a higher 4.17 point something available, right? Or, you know, 4 point something dot something available. It's just gonna update that. To avoid that, what we use is either you can remove this caret symbol. Now it's always gonna install 4.17.2 as the package version, but this still does not fix a very critical problem. That is express package in itself has three of dependencies it relies on, right? So even though 4.17.2 is a version which remains same, the versions which this express internally is using might upgrade themselves, right? And that's, that is precisely what happened in this case as well. Libraries which were using this faker.js and color.js were not, I mean, as in, you know, they were not updating themselves, but the dependency, the transient dependencies got automatically updated. Now to fix that issue, that transient dependencies, the dependencies of dependencies also are fixed properly. The package managers, NPM and YARN include their own lock files as well. So the difference between a package file and a package lock file is that this lock file goes to the end of chain of dependencies and locks each and every single one of them with the URL from which they have to download it, the integrity that is the checksum of that URL. That means even if you try to modify contents of this URL, although an individual cannot do that, even if somebody who goes rogue at NPM tries to modify the contents of this URL, then also it will fail because we have the checksum integrity. That is the hash of that particular file should match whatever we have coded. And then it includes further dependencies as well which would again further be included as the tree is resolved. Then you can see this MIMEDB is required and MIMEDB over here is in the end of the line because it does not include any requires block and there we go. And of course, you don't need to understand and remember the syntax on the lock files, but this is the reason lock files exist because if you pin the versions exactly to the places where you have to find them with the checksum, it's 
basically guaranteed that nobody can really corrupt this as long as somehow they're able to corrupt this uploaded file with the ability that that corrupted file also generates the same SHA hash, which is highly unlikely, which is probably you don't have to worry about that stuff. So yeah, I mean, this issue, this the thing which happened with faker.js and color.js is not a huge issue if you are using lock files like these in production and if you're not just randomly updating all of your packages at once as well. But there's another thing which is a potential issue over here. For example, one of the things which I discovered when we were trying to use this HTTP server, I was trying to run npx HTTP server and this, a command like this, and what a tool like npx does is that it always fetches you the latest version, the re recent version of that package. And right now it's working fine. Yesterday, if you would have tried this, it was actually giving you that infinite loop of text, which was the corrupted version of color.js package, which this package also used, hopefully, and that got corrupted, right? So even though if you're using lock files in your projects and this and that, if at any place you are using fancy new tools like npx or something which does not require you to download and install and manage all these lock files and pin the projects then of course it is a problem as well that means you should probably if, if you're using anything serious not rely on tools like npx or not rely on fancy tools which does not allow you to pin transient dependencies in this node ecosystem we have seen enough number of cases in the node.js and the javascript ecosystem around packages going rogue that it makes sense now that if you are not using lock files or if you're not learning about them it's high time that you learn and appreciate and understand how to work properly with lock files how to work properly with package.json learn a little bit about semantic versioning and everything and how all of this works because it's just a matter of time when another package goes rogue and if you're not using proper lock files in production and in your build processes something would crash and eventually you will you will ship that and it's just gonna be a disaster day for you at production. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you were not using faker.js and color.js in production without lock files. And if you were, then hard day for you. You learned something new, but if you didn't, then awesome, that's awesome. That is all for this one. Let me know in the comments what you think about this whole issue. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching